Hi, I'm Bob, and I thought I'd make a quick guide to building and flying rockets in KSP with the Ferrum Aerospace mod. Uh, if you are having trouble with rockets that are that want to fly backwards and that generally give you a lot of trouble with phantom forces, this video is for you. Um, starting with a dummy payload of basically a moon, an Apollo style moon lander with a command module on top. Looks like this using procedural fairings right here. There's a lander in there and uh, command module up top. So we're going to start with what not to do and why you might want to do it. Um, this is a this is a lifter that would work great in the stock game. Uh, it has all kinds of delta V, 4500, that's enough, like everybody says. Got tons of thrust to weight, probably too much. You would run into uh, terminal velocity, so you'd throttle it back or add a little more gas or whatever you had to do. Um, it's stable. This, thru this thrust plate design actually works really well. These joints are very strong. Um, and it's got a really low center of gravity. And everybody knows a low center of gravity is very stable, right? That's true for everything. So let's see what happens when you try to launch it. First steps, have a sip of beer. <clears throat> Second step is to push the throttle up. Third step is to turn on sassy and go. I muted sound because I recorded this once and it didn't work. The rockets overpowered me. So we're going to do the uh, the plain old stock uh, method of launching where you fly up to 10 kilometers and then pitch over to 45 degrees. Uh, works great in the stock game. Let's see what happens when we try it now. We're coming up on a stage. Okay, ditch those. And uh, close enough. I always pitched at seven anyway so let's let's start our turn and holy crap what's happening oh geez oh no ah our rocket wants to fly backwards why does our rocket want to fly backwards now well, i can actually it's funny i can get it pointed this way it shouldn't work it's actually kind of hard to build a rocket that's fundamentally unstable i tried several times and uh there's a reason i went with this thrust plate design because it's unstable but it should be less stable. I don't know. So anyway, you can see why this doesn't work. The other thing that's bad about this design is it generates a whole lot of drag. Because not only do you have the drag of this stack, but you've got the drag of all four of these stacks as well that you're pulling. And you don't have to do that. In the stock game, it doesn't matter. Everything makes the same drag no matter where it is in your rocket. With Ferrum Aerospace, it does matter. And that's part of why it takes so much less delta V to get to orbit. So let's... Um, Let's go talk about why this thing wanted to flip over backwards. Uh, now, center of gravity is, uh, everybody's known since they were a kid that a low center of gravity is more stable. It's true for athletics, it's true for cars, it's true for buildings, sandcastles. Um, when you're playing with Legos, almost everything is more stable with a lower center of gravity. Uh, and there are two reasons why this is true. For one, um, when you have a wide footprint of, and a low center of gravity, or let's, when you have a narrow footprint and a high center of gravity, you don't have to rotate very far over before your center of gravity is outside of your footprint. So where gravity is going to be pulling you down outside of your footprint, it's going to tend to tip you further over and you're going to want to fall. The other reason is with a high center of gravity, if you have any horizontal velocity at all, it's going to tend to tip you over because the force of the, that the ground is exerting has a nice long lever. It's a lot of torque. Whereas if you were to, say, take the engine off of this, ditch all this science crap, make it shorter. Let's put this back on here. And we also want to make a... We want a nice wide base. So let's pitch these this way. Now you can see that we can rotate pretty darn far over before our center of gravity is outside of our footprint. So see, even if we go to here, which is ridiculous, that's like 45 degrees, 
um, gravity is going to pull us straight down, which falls inside of our footprint. And uh, assuming nothing, no other forces are acting, it's going to tend to stabilize. It's going to want to tip back. The other news, the other thing is this: um, your center of gravity is closer to the uh, the torque arm. I, I guess the um, the point about which the torque, the horizontal force will be acting. You don't get as much torque and uh, less tendency to tip over. But the crucial thing to see here is that both of those forces require contact with the ground, and they only really dominate when you're moving slowly. Aerodynamic forces aren't huge, and, uh, and the dynamic and static forces from the ground are, uh, are dominating the behavior of whatever it is that you're dealing with. So when you're flying through the air, it's a little bit different. You want a high center of gravity and a low center of pressure. Uh, because the center of gravity is the point around which the whole thing will rotate. If you just push on it in one point in space, it's going to spin around the center of gravity, and that's what will stay centered. The center of a lift is the point where you, if you add up all the drag forces and lift forces on your rocket, uh, you can, a lot of people call it the center of pressure, I think it's a better, if you add up all those forces, that's the point around which they act. So if you build your rocket, to where the center of lift is behind the center of mass, it will be naturally stable because drag will tend to pull on this and uh, rotate it towards the back of the airstream. So it'll naturally want to point nose first. But the interesting thing about this particular rocket is that uh, as this front tank empties, which it will do first, center of gravity moves down and it actually gets less stable. So it's uh, kind of a fun demo to show. More beer. It's important. It's my brother's peanut butter stout. It is just delicious. Mm. Okay, throttle up, and here we go. Now, the weird thing, if you, sh I'll show you. If I put full control deflection in sideways, I can't really get it too far. Well, apparently I can. Huh, interesting. Well, it does, it tends to point directly towards a velocity vector. And uh, the faster, once I actually build up a little bit of velocity, yeah, this is a really bad example. I'm going to relaunch this. <laughs> I got a little aggressive. You need, a little, you need some airspeed for uh, aerodynamic forces to matter. I don't know if you realize that. Strange. Okay, so let's get a little bit faster and uh, be a little more gentle with it. Okay, now I, you notice I can't get the nose very far, even with pretty heavy control inputs. I can't get the nose very far from the velocity vector. And when I let go of the controls, it tends to pull the nose directly towards that velocity vector. And that's important. That's because, like I said, the center of pressure is somewhere around here. The center of mass is somewhere around here. And so it tends to point, to, and it, so it wants to line up the center of pressure directly behind the center of mass in the airstream. But as this rocket flies and um, moves the center of mass closer towards the back, which actually we've passed that point, um, you can see that the center of pressure doesn't have as much leverage, and so you end up with an unstable rocket. But that's also only true if you are aggressive with it and pull the nose far away from your velocity vector. Now, the reason this doesn't happen in the stock game is because drag in the stock game acts a whole lot like uh, gravity in the real world, strangely enough. And that is because everything, with the exception of a few parts, uh, mostly everything in the aerodynamics tab and docking ports, strangely, uh, generates, it all generates drag that is precisely proportional to its mass. And what that means is that in the stock game, drag will almost never provide a significant torque on your ship. It won't try to point it in any particular direction. All it does is this ether that tries to slow you down. So um, it let, basically that lets you get away with murder. You can build ships that would never work in the real world, but that would tear themselves apart due to different stresses from one part to another. But uh, Or, you know, you want to launch this big old awkward-looking space station that doesn't weigh much. It's way easier in the stock game than it is with Ferrum Aerospace. So 
With all of that being demonstrated, let's try taking our original demo and uh, launching it with a rocket that might actually work well. Strangely enough, it is possible to build an asparagus pancake. I had a hard time making my rocket unstable, the demo rocket. Um, you can do it, but the way that those stay stable is they have a lot of drag towards the back of the rocket. Excuse me. And that um, it's like stabilizing your rocket by dragging parachutes behind it. It's, it's an inefficient way to do things. So this rocket has a bit higher center of mass and a lower center of lift. Now, it's not nearly as stable as that dart that I just made. And really, I would like to have it lower. But um, I don't know if it's one of the updates or if, the, um, if procedural fairings is confusing it or what. But this is the closest stable I can get. And through experimentation, I can tell you that this rocket launches well. But the basics of designing a good rocket, um, easiest thing is build a rocket that just looks like a rocket, like something that could fly in the real world. Tall and skinny. Don't build flat pancakes because they're inefficient and unstable. Um, the biggest thing is you want the center of mass to move towards the front of the rocket. You want the center of pressure to be towards the back of the rocket. You do definitely don't want the center of pressure you're far in front of the center of mass. If you do, and you want it to be streamlined overall. The easiest payloads to launch are the dense, heavy ones that are sleek. The hardest payloads to launch are like station parts and that kind of thing that are big, generate a lot of drag, but they don't have much mass because then your center of mass ends up down towards the bottom of the rocket. So um, let's see, another thing to point out is if you have uh, tanks that are that extend above the center of mass, as they empty, they will actually make your rocket less stable. So you don't, you obviously don't want that. You want all of your tanks per stage to be below the center of mass. So you see, as I empty this tank, which it will empty first, the rocket gets more stable. So let's try launching the thing. I've, yeah, I've basically covered all the ways to build a good rocket. Now let's talk about how to fly one. Um, that thing where in the stock game that I tried uh, in the first launch where you fly up to 10 kilometers and then pitch over to 45 degrees, that's not a gravity turn. Don't call it one because it's not. It's just a regular turn. Um, and it only works, like I said, because the stock drag model lets you get away with murder. Um, the way that you fly a rocket in the real world and also with this mod and what a gravity turn is in the real world is it's a very small initial pitch over uh, to whichever direction you want your launch. And then you use the natural stability of your rocket to point into the airstream. And uh, you use the force of gravity to pull your, gra your velocity vector down towards the surface of the Earth. And it's kind of a balancing act between, um, between your thrust and your... Uh, between the thrust of your rocket and gravity pulling you down and how quickly. So the idea is that by the time you are perfectly horizontal at your apoapse, you, have, you are in orbit or very, very close to it. So that's why um, another important thing, which I forgot to mention, is you want a lower thrust to weight ratio than you're used to with the stock game. In the stock game you shoot for 2.0 and that's just a good number and then you end up throttling back a little bit to stay below your uh, below terminal velocity. In Ferrum Aerospace you want it somewhere between 1.2 and 1.6 or so. You can get away with a little higher than that or a little, a little less, maybe not, I don't know. Um, if it's too high you end up with a very steep launch or you end up having to with play with shenanigans and throttle back during your launch and it gets complicated. But a steep launch is inefficient because you end up going very high and uh, you spend a lot more time climbing and a lot less time accelerating horizontally, which is what you need to do to get to orbit. Uh, if it's too low, what will happen is you won't make it, You'll, uh, <laughs> which you can fix that with flying. Um, but basically, yeah, you don't uh, you don't hit orbital velocity by the time you're horizontal and you can't climb high enough out of the atmosphere. So uh, so the way you fly 
a gravity turn in the real world is uh, throttle up, same as usual. Don't use SAS. That's designed for the stock system, and uh, it doesn't like ferrum aerospace. So don't use it until you're getting mostly out of the atmosphere. Instead, you're going to let the rocket kind of naturally point itself forward. You're going to fly upwards to about 50 meters a second, and then you are going to pitch over to about 5 degrees, and from there you're not going to do much. If it's a really stable rocket, you won't have to do anything at all. This one is a little bit less stable, so I'm going to have to tweak it a bit and kind of fly it. But the important thing is never point far away from your prograde vector and um, be gentle with the controls. It's the, the first 15 seconds of the launch will really determine the rest of it and if it's going to be successful. So let's see what happens. More beer. That's important. Okay, go. So yeah, I'm flying straight up, same as usual, just like you're used to. Sometimes uh, if you've got a big kind of wobbly rocket, uh, flying controls work pretty well. And I'm really I'm flying to keep my uh, prograde vector. Is, that's what I'm doing. I'm steering it around. I want it to be perfectly level. Now I hit 60. I think this is going to be a pretty steep launch. We'll see because uh, I was talking instead of flying. But see, what I've done is I've pitched over about 10 degrees. I generally shoot for 5 degrees over at 50 meters a second, but sometimes that winds up too steep because the rate of pitch matters too. S um, the way to tell what, what seems to work out to a good launch, for me anyway, is passing through uh, 45 degrees over of pitch at around between 7 and 10 kilometers. So this is actually working out pretty well. Let's see. Yeah, it seems to be good. And I'm uh, I'm tweaking a little bit, but I'm really not doing much. I'm keeping the roll uh, steady, and I'm also trying to keep this vector moving right down that 90-degree line. But I'm not yawing left and right at all. So that is entirely the force of the aerodynamic force is keeping my rocket pointed towards the velocity vector and gravity pulling on my velocity vector. I should have... I wonder how long those have been out. I haven't even paid attention. Ah, whatever. Ah, apparently I cannot fly rockets and talk at the same time. But, let's see. The other way to tell if your launch is going well is uh, to look at your time to apoapsis, which if you don't have a mod installed that shows it to you, you can just go see it here. Uh, but you see, this is shallower than a lot of I guess a lot of videos that I see of launches. Um, so let's see, we just lost that one. I'm going to kick on SAS now because we're most of the way out of the atmosphere, and this stage is going to be less stable than the other stage. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. It's tough to say. But um, you keep thrusting, and the important thing is if your time to apoapsis is counting down pretty quickly, uh, you're not going to make it. If it's counting up rapidly, you're too steep. And if it gets more than about a couple of minutes, then it's a very steep launch. So that's just a good way to gauge how you're doing. Um, ideally, you want, by the time you, your apoapse gets up to around 70-something, your periapse is above the surface of the planet. It's not You're not going to get into orbit. It's not going to be 70 by 70, but you might have like 75 by... 10 or something like that and that is wonderful that means you haven't wasted a lot of energy so let's see how this goes and we're mostly out of the atmosphere anyway which makes it a whole lot more like a regular launch but you see how I, I watch a lot of YouTube videos and see and I see a lot of really steep launches and uh, that is less than ideal if you want an efficient launch without a lot of Delta V spent you want to go for a shallow launch. So, let's see, where am I? Hmm. Let's see, mechanical Jeb seems to be confused, or not, uh, Ferrum. I've been talking too much. Okay, Flight Engineer seems to be confused with my Delta V. It was pretty well dead on for a while, but this is a strange construction anyway. Um, yeah, I think it might be totally froze up, and that sucks. Okay, but I've got quite a bit of gas left, and that's probably a couple hundred ms. And let's see, to circularize, I'm going to need how much? Just as a demonstration. 
uh, what I could circularize with 150 meters a second. That's awesome. That's great. If you can do it for like, I've done total launches for like 2,900 meters a second, but that was with some shenanigans with cutting like doing a steep initial launch and then cutting throttle until it pitches over. Um, and it was mostly trial and error. But anyway, uh, yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything. Let me look. Let's check out my notes here. Oh, yeah. Uh, I want to talk about mods and some other things. Um, Ferrum's got another couple of mods. I know a lot of people complain about uh, that uh, Ferrum Aerospace makes it too easy because... Uh, well, because it do, it take it knocks a thousand ms of delta v off of what you need to make orbit. Uh, that's true. It does do that. It makes it uh, you can get to orbit with smaller rockets. Um, but I think that's a bad argument because an inaccurate drag model is a really bad way to make a game difficult. And there is a mod called Kerbal ISP Difficulty Scaler that uh, it aims to fix that problem. What it does is it lowers the specific impulse of all your engines by a given factor, uh, both atmospheric and um, and real world, or sorry, atmospheric and vacuum, uh, in such a way you can choose different settings. So like uh, Ferrum Aerospace to stock KSP will make it so that a rocket that barely makes orbit in the stock game will also barely make orbit with Ferrum Aerospace, but it's still compatible with Flight Engineer. You still only need 3,500 meters per second to get there, but um, you're going to need more engine to do it, more fuel and a bigger rocket to get that much delta V because your engines are less efficient. Uh, you can also set it to, um, hey, I should open this, shouldn't I? Oh, geez. Oh, God, this is going to be bad. Okay. Um, you can also set it to uh, Ferrum Aerospace to real life, which is uh, the masochistic way to play KSP. I went to ELU that way once, and it was almost not fun, to be completely honest. But uh, you can do that too. And that is, uh, I, I promise that playing with, uh, with kids and Ferrum Aerospace is a whole lot harder than playing with just the stock game. So don't... Uh, don't let that make your decision. The other mod that I wanted to point out is another of Ferrum's mods. It's called uh, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement, and I think a lot of people install it, whether they use uh, FAR or not. But basically, it makes the tall, skinny rockets that work best uh, possible because it scales the strength of a connection based on, um, basically based on the... Uh, size of that connection. So a two and a half meter connection is going to be a lot stronger than a one, one and a half meter connection or whatever. So uh, it, that's why that big tall thing I built didn't wobble very much. I did add a bunch of struts in the middle underneath that fairing, but that's not what, uh, what makes it work. So yeah, um, I think that pretty much covers everything. Look through my notes real quick. Oh, damn, I just spilled my beer. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Shit. Oh, and I cussed too. I shouldn't do that. I'll have to bleep that out later. Um, okay, so. Yeah, that, uh. If you have any questions, feel free to post them. Uh, you can message me on the forums or post them on the YouTube video. I try and watch. Sometimes I don't answer for a couple of days, and I apologize for that. Uh, and thank you very much for watching.